Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again and Happy New Year's. I'm finally back to actually being able to talk properly since I was sick for a couple of days. Last couple days right before the New Year so I had to purge all of the bad stuff I guess out of my body. So I was going to do a SSF update and kind of uh, inform you guys of just what I've acquired in SSF and some general updates but I think I'm going to save that video for tomorrow because I was kind of inspired to make this character since it's been a while since I've revisited this. Some of you may disagree but it has been a while since I have played Righteous Fire. Now uh, one thing I want to state is this is being done in a solo cell found environment which means I cannot trade so I need to basically craft my way through playing this character. Uh, the other cool thing is with the introduction of the new Conquerors which adds in a load of new affixes, RF has received some love. Now I can't answer the question of is it better than it was back in the day because that requires actual math and I haven't done that math. I won't do that math until I get the character to end game. So with that being said, let me just show you guys a quick demonstration of a pretty simple budget character and how it would clear through the axe. I'm um, not really using anything special. This is a five link scorching rate because of the faster casting. I do have a recovery belt, but it's really not that strong. It's just because I have the catalyst on it. It basically has a tier two, almost minimum life roll from elder. It's got, basically you need an elder item level 75 belt to get the proper mods. You're looking for max life, uh, flat life, and then percent life recovery, but this will get re-rolled later for much better rolls. Um, and then key tip again, use the catalyst when it's white because it gets only, it only takes only, only takes four catalysts instead of 20. You just gotta be careful because certain orbs do remove the catalyst. Uh, just standard movement speed boots. I just put on the Rise of the Phoenix. We're using two Kikazarus to level, but I don't even need this one on. Okay, I need attribute requirements, kind of important. Um, I've just got a standard amulet, a gold rim, uh, incursion chest piece for the HP, uh, a really okay medium tier weapon, item level garbage. It's just got fire damage over time multi with Ellie base with fire. And that's pretty much about it. Let me go turn on, I'm running Malevolence right now along with Blasphemy Flammability. Only reason I'm not using Skitterbots is they just feel a little inconsistent. Um, that's about it. Doesn't mean I won't use them in the future. Um, tree pathing looks a little different. Uh, we decided it's better to path the inner way here opposed to the other routes. Um, you just save a few points and I still get to grab the shield nodes. Um, chat helped me a bit, so thanks Thorstar for that. You guys can kind of just see. This isn't like a full build guide, so with that being said, let me just go and kill some stuff. Now, remember, this, this is not me trying to convince you to play RF. This is just me wanting to play it because it has. it's been quite a while since I've played it. Now, after I do this really quick Blood Aqueduct run, I'm also going to go ahead and go to my hideout. And from the hideout, I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the gear. So if you're a new player, you don't really have to watch past this uh, because essentially it's all just going to be min-maxing and explaining what's really different with RF and why I'm interested to play it now. It's not like I'm just randomly playing it and going in blind. I mean, I am semi going in blind, but I did a bit of research because I wanted to know what the, the ceiling for kind of like scaling my character was. Also, for people who don't know, RF has been changed significantly. Uh, it now actually benefits off of plus two gem level. On top of it, scaling off of plus the gem level, um, it also can be scaled with, oh, it's scaled less off HP now. So it's like, it's like a mixture between gem level and a mixture between uh, uh, HP. So the reason why that's interesting and potentially good is because there are new affixes that offer plus one to global gems. Well, global of a type, so fire, ice, lightning, chaos, which means if you get plus one fire gems, it benefits your scorching ray and it benefits your uh, righteous fire. I think it might even benefit purity of fire because it's an active gem, which is really big brain. Okay, um, yeah, so I'm running malevolence right now. Like I said, malevolence just helps with skill effect duration, which is good for scorching ray. I don't really think I'm gonna be running it 100% of the time. It's just what I've got right now. So let me talk about some of the gear that I wanna use. Now, let's talk about the struggle first. So, when you play a Righteous Fire build, you typically put your Righteous Fire in your helmet. You want to get an Elder Helmet so you can roll burn damage. 
if you use an essence of horror, which is one of those rare ones you can corrupt on an essence into an essence of horror, you can get 30% more elemental damage with burn damage. Unfortunately, in SSF, that's pretty unrealistic to get unless you have an abundance of horrors. So I decided to delve craft with Scorch Fossils. Scorch Fossils are these fossils right here, which essentially give you more fire modifiers. They also give you a chance to hit uh, right here. The nearby enemies have minus nine fire res. For a lot of builds, you don't really make use of that. For Righteous Fire, you always make use of it. If something is in your circle, it is nearby. It is minus fire res. With the buff to monster elemental resistance across the board, I figured this would be a good substitute until I could get a really good horror helmet. So minus nine fire res with level 18 burn damage with a prefix open for life. It's an okay helmet. It's going to get us started. Now, the other problem is you can now get fire damage over time multiplier on your gloves and your amulet. Well, the problem with that is if I'm using my helmet for RF and I'm using my gloves for um, fire damage over time multiplier, the only thing I have left to six link is a chess piece. But Scorching Ray does not favor reds because I want red because I'm a jug. Jug gets two times armor from your chess piece. I know people say armor is a meme, but with Molten Shell, armor is very strong. Armor mitigates all damage type with the exception of maybe damage over time, which RF is made for. So no problem. Um, so that's kind of the goal. So what I decided, I got lucky from the void, pulled out a six link gladiator plate, item level 80. Um, so I was manually chroming. Remember you want to do reduced attribute requirement. And this is just a starting chest. It's not an end game chest, obviously, right? So I got three blue and the goal is four blue. We want four blue and two red. Two red because we get burn damage and inspiration. So we're gonna get Verici and Research from Betrayal and slam a white socket and hope I can hit this green socket. If this green turns white, then we're done and I can craft this chess piece, aim for like 120 life with tri res with maybe 2K armor and we have a decent chess piece for a long time. Other parts we could focus on while the chess piece is done and this is good because remember, this is a character that's going to be tackling an awakening level eight starting right away. So we need to make sure the single target is there. So righteous fire being a damage multiplier with vol righteous fire being a damage multiplier with a six link arcane or sorry, six link scorching ray on top of having the minus fire res from the helmet. Remember, you can get burn damage multiplier now on gloves. I don't have them on the shaper gloves currently because I got the faster casting, but it looks like this. Sorry. This is not fire damage multi. This actually got plus one to level of all intelligence gems, which I think is actually better for right now um, because I think it's important to balance them. So you have two options on your amulet is plus one level of intel gem. I don't know if you can get fire gem. Um, maybe you can get fire gem actually, but I got intel, which is kind of the same. It's not as good as fire, I think, because fire would work for purity fire, but I don't really know 100% yet. Um, but anyway, this is a very nice option as well. Now, most of your damage also comes from jewels. Uh, jewels are super strong right now, especially because you can roll fire damage over time multiplier. So getting that 4% fire damage over time multiplier with a life roll is like super GG, amazing, phenomenal. The build gets five jewels. Uh, as a starting jewel, if you're looking for more health and anatomical knowledge posted right here is pretty solid. As an example, this is a 5% life node. If I put on anatomical knowledge, I go up 100 HP, and that's not including these two nodes, which give 30 int, which is another 10 base life, which is like a lot of life for RF. Um, doop. Okay, so now uh, another little thing I want to drop for you guys. Let me see if I have this over here. Where is it at? Give me uno, memento, por favor. Okay, perfect. So there is one end game goal with this build, two actually. So number one, I wanted to incorporate explosion into my build. Why? Because when you have explosion into your build, it just feels Path of Exile like, you know? When I played Death's Earth, you had uh, Profane Bloom. When you play Infernal Blow, it booms by itself. For other builds, you get Herald of Ice. It's not percentage explosion, but it makes clearing consistent. Unfortunately, Righteous Fire has been nerfed, 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 and then nerfed with interaction. 
which means enemies killed explode does not work with RF. However, killed enemies explode works with RF. Don't ask me why, couldn't tell you. This is how they changed it. Um, so as of now, from what I'm aware of, with the exception of unique items like Impulsa, with Skitterbots, etc., the only interaction that I believe works with automatic explosion RF without doing shenanigans with just Righteous Fire kills, enemy explodes, is, I think it's, I forgot which one it's called. Uh, it Basically, it's killed, at, it's this mod right here. It's item level 85 chess piece. I think it's the fire base. I don't remember. It doesn't really matter. You can look at it on this website too. It, it's very difficult for us to get on top of it having one of the rarest rarities for hitting, but this is a potential option which would make Righteous Fire feel as smooth as butter as we get at endgame. The reason why it's cool is you charge it to a pack at T16, there's a bunch of white mobs and a rare. The white mobs die instantly, which explode dealing a percentage of their max life, which is then scaled by your area modifiers, which then instantly kills the rare. So it makes it feel really nice, right? That's basically the goal. The other option is I do not want to use a Rise of the Phoenix. Uh, the reason why I made this character is I want to be able to tank tier 16 metamorphs. So there's a couple of ways to absorb damage in Path of Exile. You can mitigate damage, you can get life regen, you can leech, yada yada yada, whatever, blah 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 blah. However, to tank metamorphs, from my personal experience, you need like one of very few mechanics. And that mechanic is life gain on block. Of course, if you're CI or ES, then it's energy shield gain on block. Because metamorphs hit so quickly and they AOE overlap you and they shotgun you. And the only way to really stop that from happening, unless you're reducing the damage to nothing, which is not gonna happen right now, is gaining life when you block. So the goal is gonna be to craft a shaped shield. Uh, I think a hunter shield might work too. But one of, I think both of them share the mods where you can get heal 5% of maximum life gain on block. I don't get much block with this build, but with a Rumi's, we can get over 50%. That's enough for a Metamorph. That's, that's totally fine. Um, and then you heal 5% on top of that. Now, the goal is getting an armor shield so we can scale armor still. And then um, if you get really lucky, you can get plus max fire res, you can get plus max all res. And you can also craft reduced damage taken over time, which works for everything and not just for just fire. Now remember, this isn't a build guide. This is just me explaining some things that have changed for some people who are aware of Righteous Fire. Not all of my builds or videos are meant to be played or sorry, meant for brand new players. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much about it. We'll be leveling this character as we go. So if you liked it, feel free to like, share and subscribe. Um, I don't know what's up with the Icicle Miner, or not Icicle Miner, the Arc Miner, he's doing totally fine. People always ask me, did you quit this character? No, I just feel like playing another character, that's all. I'll go back to it when I feel like it. That's really about it. Uh, I think I might make an Awakener 8 video, but I figured people are littering YouTube with Awakener 8 kills, so I, was, I didn't bother with it. I've done a lot of them on my stream. Awakener 8's pretty easy. It's not very friendly for Righteous Fire, because if you stand on a degen pool with righteous fire on you die because it disables your regen and minuses your res and shocks you so for awakener you just turn off righteous fire and use scorching ray it's not going to be the fastest kill but not every build is designed to be able to do every aspect of content because let's face it the game is not 100 percent balanced right anyway though that's pretty much about it hope you guys had a wonderful time hope you guys enjoyed yourselves and i'll see you guys all tomorrow take care everybody